expect them to protect us from the cold, from the heat. We have faith in them. So they give us hope. Faith is the substance of hope. Faith substantiates hope. Psychologically in our mind. If we don't first have this in our mind and heart, if we don't have it psychologically, we forget about expecting anything that physically manifests. You don't have faith in God in your mind and in your heart. You ain't getting no physical manifestation. First things first. God is great. The Bible said of the children of Israel that that generation that came out of Egypt, the gospel was preached unto them, but it did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. They heard that they were going to prophesy. They heard that they were God's chosen people. They had been seeing the works of God, but they didn't have faith in God. So, the gospel didn't profit them. It didn't give them no hope. Out of all things God had done to build their faith in Him, after all the promise He had given them to build their faith in Him, they didn't consider. So the gospel didn't profit them. The hope being set before them, they was told about, since they didn't have faith psychologically and in their heart, they didn't receive the promise. The gospel profited nothing. They disbelieved God. They questioned God. When God tried their faith in Him, let it be that they didn't have no more to see if they would trust Him. After all He had just done in the land of Egypt, brought them out with a mighty hand. You see, the gospel can't be proclaimed to you. The hope given of Christ, the resurrection, even your body to be born from the dead, telling you of the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, to be born into the family of God, into the kingdom of heaven. But if you don't never come to gain faith in God through hearing His word, the good news, and even seeing of His power, if your heart be hard, see, faith is the substance of hope in your mind. If your heart be hard that you don't consider, you just take for granted. Ain't no way you can take hold of the hope to accept Christ. So you got to give in your bad and hard first. And then you get the physical and spiritual manifestations. This is what the apostle is explaining here. There's no deep mystery. We use faith every day when we take in a breath of air. We need faith. We get up out of bed and come into the kitchen in the morning time looking for mommy or daddy or, or no one to fix the meal. That's faith. That's faith. That's faith in mommy, daddy. Your parents or your friend, no one, who prepared your meal, your wife, your husband. We just faith in it. When a newborn babe is placed in the arm of his mother, it comes to feel that those arms are arms of love and security as the mother takes the child along and nourishes it. It all matters. God has built it everywhere in the measure of faith. It's just who you allow to gain your faith. You see, faith is authored by the one who faith is in. You see, God has put forth a lot of effort to gain our faith. We don't come to faith in God because we just decide to believe in God. We don't come to faith in God because we just make ourselves believe. 
Even that God will grant us our needs. We don't come to the expect of God to grant us our needs and have that hope by just pushing our man down. No, no. God offers faith in Him within us. John three sixteen says, "For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. He gave His Son to die." God shows love continually to build our faith in Him. The Father gave His Son. The Son gave His life. Died for our Father's sins on the first test. Removing that testament. Apple gave His blood to flow on His side. Apple's heart and even stopped beating. Miraculous. Gave blood to flow from his side with water. We will be baptized in water. It's part of the covenant. Gave the blood from his side for his will and testament. The blood of his testament. To give an inheritance of himself. Blood that can wash away our sins. We who were born under his will and testament. He done this and had to record it to build our faith in him. You see, Christ is the author and the finisher of our faith. He is the one that went through all the work to build our faith in him. God never required no one to just believe in him without him first showing himself faithful. Never. He didn't require the Moses. He didn't require of Joshua, he didn't require of Samuel, he didn't require of Samson. He always first showed himself faithful. It's the way it is. You see, you didn't come to have faith in your mama and your daddy of your own man. You just said, I believe mama God, I believe mama God, I believe dad fixed me, I believe dad is going to work with me. I believe mama fixed me up today, I believe. That's not the way you came to faith. In mommy and daddy, I don't know why some people y'all can't believe it. But the way you came to faith in mommy and daddy, and mommy and daddy did things for you. That's why you expect there to be a meal on the table in the morning time. That's why you expect there to be food there for you to prepare for yourself in the morning. Or big enough to do that. Because you have faith in Mommy and daddy do what mommy and daddy has done. Mommy and daddy has shown you care. This is what you came to faith in them. You just stand there and psych yourself. When you come to faith in your husband or your wife to say, I do, by just believing in your man, you say, He gonna make me a good husband, he gonna make me a good husband, he gonna make me a good husband. She gonna make me a good wife. She gonna make me a good wife. She gonna make build up your faith. You be made a fool out of yourself. Somebody said you just believe it. You have it. Oh really? Try. Give it a shot. That's so bad about a woman too. I don't need to go there. No, you have to gain your faith. The man had to gain the woman's faith before she ever say I do. It takes effort. The woman had to gain the man's faith through what she did before he would want to take her as his wife. It took effort on the part of the other person. It took effort on the part of Christ for you to have the opportunity, the means of gaining faith in him. Christ gave his life. Christ rose from the grave as your high priest by the power of the Father's Holy Spirit that he was anointed with. It is Christ that has blessed you down through life and has done things to you. Your faith was offered by him. If you have faith in him, are willing to let him gain your faith by considering what he do and has done for you, that's his work. 
He offers that in you. You just have the choice of considering. See, the children of Israel, even though they heard the gospel, them prop them, not being mixed with faith, that don't mean God didn't do things for them. That don't mean God wasn't showing them love. No, no, it don't mean that. He was right there trying to offer him, doing the thing to offer faith in them. The enemy that had them in slavery, he sent plagues and, and destruction upon them, upon their crop, their livelihood. He even, in the end, killed their firstborn. They say, let my firstborn son, Israel, go. Oh, he showed love mightily. And he brought them to the Red Sea, and the sea was standing up, clothed before them. They had no way across them, and he cried. Moses began to cry to God. First, he said to Moses, said to Chumano, hold your peace. The enemy was coming. They were closed in. The enemy coming on one side and the Red Sea on the other. They wanted to show you. Why you want God home? So he could show you something. The materials began to cry. So he the brought his head back. Moses said to him, Hold your peace and you shall behold the salvation of the Lord. Moses, he began to cry out to God. You know what God said to Moses? After he had used Moses and doing mighty signs and wonders, God said to Moses, Wherefore cry thou unto me? You tell the true Israel to go forth, but you you stretch out your rod and you part that sea. In so many words, God said to Moses, What do you cry to me for? I don't turn water to blood at your words, at your action. I don't rain down fire on the Egyptian army, on the Egyptian's crop at your responses. And I gave you Moses, your brother, your older brother, to be your prophet, your mouthpiece. I made you like God to Pharaoh. What you crying to me for, Moses? Stretch out your rod and part that sea. See. God had to build Moses faith in himself. Remember when Moses first came before God at the burning bush and God told Moses to lay a staff on the ground. Moses laid his staff on the ground and lit out life when he turned to his You believe nothing. So God told Moses, come back, take your stick, your staff by his tail, get your stick by his tail, pick it up and turn back and take stick to a staff on me. Moses had to gain faith in God through God at first. And Moses gained faith in himself as a part of God, as a servant of God. Now at the Red Sea, God says to Moses, What do you cry to me for? Tell it, water, to stand up. Exhortation. Go from one step to another, one stage to another. Look at God. For Moses to get there overnight. God did many things to build the true of those faith in him. To offer faith in them. He showed much love. But they kept ignoring it. Kept ignoring it. Why does God require faith, some people say? Why do your mama want you to have faith in her? Why do your dad want you to have faith in them when they keep on doing things to you? And you keep ignoring it. Why would they want you to have just one or one or one or one? Wonder why you come to me and say, Just wonder, wonder why would your mother want you to have faith in her? And then she started talking about what she done done for you. You tell her, but they only tell her what they be. So they wonder why we come. Want us to have faith in him. Just wonder why. Isn't that something? It's really something in it. You know, taking for granted is putting low down. But we come here as children, naturally selfish, self centered, and taking for granted. And we have to learn to appreciate just the way it is with human beings. It's responsibility to teach us. So it's responsibility to teach you not to be self centered for it, God the Father and the Messiah.
So I'm going to have to Look at what I've done for you. All you got to do is look. So all that you really had to do was take consideration of what God had done. Look at how he parted the sea for them. And they went across on dry ground. They were there in the situation of face of death. And no way out. And God made a way out of no way. Part the sea. Water stood up like a wall and the wind came and dried the ground. They walked across on dry ground. So it wasn't done nothing for them to gain faith in God by. Had God done nothing? How is that can be said that they heard but the gospel, but it didn't profit them not being rich in faith? What's wrong? What's wrong? It's a problem maybe in God, isn't it? The problem is in us, is in man. Look at the thing that Christ has done. The author of our faith. See, faith in him is through his labor. I see some people say, you want to be healed? Say, by a strike from him, I'm healed. By a strike from him, by a strike from him, by a strike from him. What is this? What is this? Put it on your freedom and do walk by every day and say, by a strike from him, I'm healed. I'm healed. By a strike from him, I'm healed. What is this? That's like. Someone said, what is faith? Do you believe that you tell your mama you want some water and you little child that she would give it to you? And you ask, what is faith? Do you, would you expect her to hand you a glass or a cup of water? And you say, what is faith? And what do I mean when I say faith is the suffering of hope? You really expect her to give you that thing, water. And it's through faith in her that you expect. And she done labor to build that faith in you. She had to labor to build it. To bring you into the world. To put a ball in your mouth. To clean you when you win on yourself and use a bad on yourself. To hold you when you cry. Or she, she labored to build this faith. And you, you didn't know it. And you, what is faith? You make facts. You know that. So, let me explain. There's, there's a reason you need to be explained. Sad to say, a lot of ministers out there who don't know where you're living, so I need to explain. Psychological faith is the substance of psychological hope. It is through faith that we're able to hope or expect. Without faith, can you have hope? Without faith in someone, something, it's possible to have hope or expectation of someone, something. That don't mean someone has not done something for you. You don't have faith in God, it don't mean God hasn't done nothing for you. It doesn't mean the Bible is not true. That God didn't make you. The Bible said God, he fashioned the person in the womb. He gave the, the woman's body the ability and, and he's in that fashion body in the baby in the womb. As well as he formed the spirit of man within him as a form in the womb, the child, the spirit form also. Man's body and spirit. The Ecclesiastes sway. God formed the spirit of man in him. And he was Ecclesiastes. Can't say God had done nothing for you when you have all the blessing and the sun shining down on you. He created the heaven and earth and he said to me, I want y'all to rest the sun of man. Why would you have been? Why would God give a law? Say things in love. Oh, I shouldn't be cruel, should I? 